Hey guys, sorry about that. Uh, I don't know what's going on. Lately, everything just breaks and it's driving me crazy. Uh, rest assured, I am absolutely doing my best to try and fix this as fast as I can. Uh, and hopefully, most of you stayed. All right, let's try and figure out how to get back into Disco Elysium. <laughs> So here's the thing that I don't get. It doesn't happen when I'm playing FF14. So it's not just games being on the TV. It's some combination of streaming, Edge or Chrome, something. Some kind of full screen issue? I don't know. The The TV goes off occasionally. Like it goes completely black. Uh, I also changed the... Uh, it might be G-Sync and streaming. I changed the... Um, I changed the, uh, what do you call it, HDMI cable. To... Uh, the one that came with the PS5. And we'll see how that works. Alright, let's go talk to these motherfuckers. Everybody should be more like Measurehead. Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Let's take a look at him. Are you admiring my morphophysiology? It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this racial pinnacle. Be calm, I'm Sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. I will say nothing, but I will push out my chest. What is this androgynous display of sexual maturity? Merely standing up makes you sweat profusely. Your breathing is erratic. Your own heartbeat in your ears grows frantic, and you feel your blood pressure rise. Stop it! You are embarrassing yourself in front of this woman. This display of weakness may appeal to older women with a stronger maternal instinct, but it is a liability here on Battlefield Martinez. Jean Luc, his body is betraying his degeneracy pretty hard. Maybe you can ask him to leave. My body is unimportant. I am with the police and I need to get into the harbor. That is precisely the negligence that has led you to succumb to unruly. You reek of it. An invisible sword of unruly emerges from your throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Yes, yes, I'm a fucking alcoholic. Now I need to get in here. No, you don't. You need to get another drink. Occidental Aplo Group B4 is done giving orders around here. The influence of the Am Sandwich race is waning. Listen, I don't care about the race stuff. I just need to do my fucking job. Begging for help. Attempting to pass fear for cooperation. How far the Occidental Aplo Group has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. You gave the world eugenics, electricity, and powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. You dominated lesser cultures like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato-obsessed Koikos. But 
Now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens a door to the harbor. Dude, I just need you to move like 20 centimeters. It is my task to keep the degenerate trunks from entering the arm. Ooh. Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right, whatever. Just let me in the harbor. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. Bring your troops to the Seminine Islands and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum for you. The walls will be lined with bottles of al Ghul, your beloved beverage. Inside, we will store the oaths to homosexuality you call art, and your microcephalic skulls. Aren't the Union white guys? Oh, don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. You keep telling yourself that, buddy. Mr. Claire is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital. Something your race, naivistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. I mean, communism's pretty cool. <laughs> Idiotic communism is the single greatest contributor to your race descent. Everywhere around you. The fruits of its failure to challenge the world order. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted diseases. Above all, rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Tell me where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? I mean, disco, actually. Offshoots of the Seminese people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race. But what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the Seminese race. Yeah, that, that's wonderful. I, I need to get in. What you need is to come to terms with extinction and never getting into this harbor. I'm gonna fucking knock you out! How did this happen? Your little fist is in his giant hand, and he's squeezing it. It hurts. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I am a degenerate alcoholic. Yeah, that is the best option, isn't it? Fuck you! Your fist cracks in his hand like a ripe apple. Pain shoots up into your brain as he's twisting it more and more. The words to the song have changed. Say, 
I am a violent drunk. No, I will not fucking say anything. Your hand twists in his grip and the pain blinds you. Still, you press the words out of your swollen mouth. Good. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. All right. Well, I mean, we're not going to, we're going to, yeah, we're just going to, we're just going to pretend that didn't happen. <laughs> Excuse me. We'll go to bed. So by the way, I restarted the computer. That problem, gone. So I don't know if it's the HDMI cable. Or the fact that I restarted the computer. I guess we'll find out like tomorrow or the day after. Dog's so powerful. Can you hear him going like blah 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 in the background? Oh, I should tell people uh, I'm streaming again. Excuse me. There we go. Is there an actual time limit in the game? Yes. You have to solve the game. You have to solve the case within 10 days. Did I get a new TV due to a bad HDMI cable? No, the uh, the HDMI cable. Sorry, the TV was had the old one had failing HDMI inputs. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Ooh. Let's see if we can fix the, uh, the mirror. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, the chain cutters slip out of your hands as you attempt to twist the faucet into place. Well, you know one thing for sure. You've probably never been a plumber. Can't. The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. Option to go to sleep goes available after 21. Crawl in. The sheets feel at once coarse and clammy against your skin. The bed sags beneath your weight as you stretch out and finally close your eyes. And then, sleep doesn't come. And then, sleep doesn't come. 
but I want to sleep. Obviously, you're in bed with your eyes closed, but it's not happening. Why? Maybe it's the bed's fault. Let's check the pillow. Its synthetic filling has separated into hard lumps. The pillowcase smells oddly. Alright, what about the blanket? It barely covers your toes, stretching over your soft belly. This is your body here, intimate and warm, breathing. Under your thrumming eyelids, you see a dizzying array of colors. You won't get off this carousel quite so easily. All right, off to the other side. It's a little better. Colors, scenes, and half-formed phrases still litter your mind. Part of you is still trying to solve the case, isn't it? Who killed that guy? Something to do with, what was it that the lieutenant said? Union? And it's gone again. Your thoughts lost between the slowing brain waves. All right, fall asleep now. Your breathing steadies. A great silence washes over you until your eyelids twitch in your sleep and images, images start forming. Hey, it's me. Do you remember the scent of your childhood? That third option's the coolest by far. I was born in a hospital where people usually go to die. You're not kidding anyone, Harry. You don't remember shit. Tell me, do you remember your wife's hand on your face? Tell me what's going on. I'm not gonna answer nothing until you tell me who you are. You know who I am. I'm the bad day. The one where you ask her. And then later in the streets, wandering. It's the worst day of all time, Harry dear. And it's coming. She will hear about it on the phone. Reality will turn into a grotesque nightmare. This will be the last thing you did to her. Tell me, do you remember the love of your life? Who? Do you remember the warmth of her thighs between her legs and in her mouth? Jeez. I was left is probably the most likely. That's right, funky baby. And you just stood there. One hand on the bottle and the other on your dick. Watching her go. Let it all be dragged away from you. Tell me, where are your friends? Human beings have friends, Harry boy. Where the hell are yours? I can get it all back, though. No, it's gone. Three times gone and never coming back. You failed. You failed me. You failed Elysium. What? What's Elysium? Everything. The pale and the isolas on the surface. The outer magnetosphere. Burning, furious truth. Eight thousand years of written history. You really dropped the ball, Harry. 4.6 billion people, and you failed every single one of them. You really fucked up. I've seen you before. No, you haven't. You're just sleep-talking, and the act is wearing thin, too. 
The spots on the disco ball fade around you. You'll be back in those cold snakeskins in no time. Sweating up the bay. Stinky boy. Fuck off, reptile and limbic. I can come back from this. You're not coming back from shit. Thrashing around in that high conductivity state of yours. Bumping into things and acting like a clown. Who are you kidding? I'm trying to solve the fucking case, dude. You're trying to what? I can't hear you. This is just a word dream now. Jumbled up garbage. The pictures are gone. The bed rises to meet you. A thin, sleep-like state. More glass than velvet, grinding in your head. So something is wrong. Sleep shouldn't be this bad, this dry, this unnourishing. There's something wrong with your thoughts. Some kind of new type of hangover. Another type of... Oh, man. Oh, yes, party boy. And it's worse than the one before. Just think of the shit you saw. Here it comes, too. So soon already. A silent alarm goes off in your head like clockwork. Barely let you sleep at all. Time to get those clothes on, Harry. Time to go to work in the shit factory. I fucking hate my limbic system. My limbic system's a fucking asshole. Good going, buddy. Is that how it's gonna be when I go to sleep? Yes. Wait till you see the one with the chick in it. It's gonna be a good one. You feel even worse this morning than you did last night. The fuck's going on? You mean, why are you so tired? Too tired and down to even think? It is worrying, isn't it? You can't be a detective like this. Detectives need to be able to think. No, no, that's not it, really. I feel super good. That's not really true. Your heart has finally pumped all the speed out of your system, Buster. Time to get some more. Don't do that. Stay strong. The hangover will wear off. You don't need to keep doing this to yourself. No, I can take it. I am not going to go looking for speed. Are you sure? Ready to live as this pathetic shell of yourself for days. Basically, a week. Let's be honest, two weeks. Maybe three. You won't make it. Half the town will be dead by then. You will be fired. That's a lie. I can do this without speed. Half the town will not be dead. Suit yourself, slow, sad shell man. See how you do without your spark. Volition is my friend. Also, if I find speed, I need to give it to children. Not take it myself. Obviously. A mirror hangs on the bottom. I assume Kim's downstairs. The door is closed. Oh shit. Looks like we can get to work at once. The union muscle turned up. They look rowdy. We should talk to them. These are the guys Gar told us about yesterday? I completely forgot. 
Sorry, I had a rough night's sleep. It's them by the looks of it. Loud and nasty, just like the manager said. One loose thread less to worry about. And one big problem to replace it. Why do we gotta talk to him anyway? Everything points to the dock workers union. The tracks in the mud. The circumstances in Martinez. My preliminary information. Which may, of course, all be wrong. But we still need to talk to them. And what do you mean rowdy, please. by the way? I mean ungovernable. Martinez isn't exactly enthusiastic about the RCM being here. They prefer to be policed by the Union. These men here. Men who drink beer for breakfast. There's talk of an armed wing of the Union called the Hardy Boys, who are responsible for state policing. I think it's them. So many. Should we call for reinforcements? That would just escalate tensions. No captain would sign off on it. Solving one murder isn't worth a conflict between the RCM and the Debarders Union. In fact, even the death of two detectives might not warrant an all-out war. So let's keep a cool head, okay? All right, one let's more roll. thing before we do. We don't have to talk to them immediately. We can walk right past them, continue with our business. Yeah, streetwise. Zoom right past. Do it on your own terms. But aren't you curious to know what they have to say about the murder? They're in no hurry to leave. They think they own the place. Anyway, I leave that Does the set to you. of NPCs on the street change of every single day in the game? Because if so, that makes it crazy. Like, the amount of shit you can miss. Not every day. Hold on, let's main menu it, because my cursor's broken. Wow, cursor's still broken. Wow. I really do want to apologize today, guys. Uh, today's stream's been kind of a mess. Um, it's my first stream as a single dad dog. Sorry, dog dad, and the shit's breaking, and I just want everyone to know that I'm very sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. <laughs> it's... Even I think the way Canadians say it is fucking hilarious. And I never thought of that until Paige started making fun of me. Because she's a fucking American bitch. And I love her, and I'm gonna marry her. But, regardless... All right, first things first, I want to examine that fucking body. I, 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 like, oh, you know what? You should get your pin back. Just a moment, and there's no public phones nearby? The closest phone booth is down the coast. Sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. It's fine, I understand. Thank you anyway. I'm glad to see you again, dear. The lady is distressed. Perhaps something more upbeat might cheer her up. Howdy, Lena! What's kicking? Please don't trouble yourself about me, sweetie. I was just hoping to make a call, but the Whirling's phone line isn't working. A faint smile tells you she appreciates the effort. But at the moment, her mind is on more serious matters. The union office probably has a phone, but I can't really get there. Or to the phone booth down the coast. And Gary's phone is dead, too. Why do you need to use the phone, Lena? To let the young woman who's house-sitting for us know that we may be delayed. Morel, my husband, and Gary were supposed to get back by Monday night. But they're still missing, and I haven't heard from them. I was also hoping she'd heard from Morel. Has your husband gone missing before? That's just it. This isn't like him at all. He always plans his expeditions so carefully. But you have more important things to worry about. How about your pen? I hope you were able to pawn that old trinket. I bought it back. I, I know it means a lot to you. You should have it. Oh, thank you, dear. I confess, I am glad to see it again. Level up! Very honorable. You know what was officer. worth it? All of that shit! Motherfuckers! Even the lieutenant seems happy with this turn of events. Now, what else, sweetie? That's all for now. Now we're gonna check that fucking body. 
And if we can't, we're gonna endurance up and check that fucking body again. Chat? Oh, I, is my... Oh, I didn't. Hold on. Chat? Boost my physical shit, please! Please! I need to get this fucking body down! God damn it! You people are such assholes! You people are such fucking pieces of shit! You fucking motherfuckers! Why do I even talk to you people? There he still is, looking right through you with his white eyes. The body below is entirely dedicated to that corpse smell. Emitting it is all it does now. As you breathe in, the odor comes over you. It's the smell of the mind telling you to run and your stomach to wring itself empty. With your hands at your sides and your eyes squinting, you stand in it. Do they always do that? They do after seven days, yes. We are deep in decomposition here. Let's step closer. The man before you is naked, but for a pair of underpants and enameled boots. His skin is greenish, marbled with decaying veins and blotched by lividity. A fading web of tattoos covers his chest and shoulders. The cargo belt used to fasten him to the branch above appears industrial in strength. Let's inspect the boots. The material appears to be ceramic. Its clean white stands in stark contrast to the decaying flesh above the knee. The man wore thick polymer socks, probably for padding. A fine array of interlocking plates covers them. By the way, to answer the questions of how I'm playing this, I'm willing to do almost anything outside of the case, but when it comes to a goddamn mystery, I want to fucking figure it out, goddammit. Delicate and fragile, they feel alien to the world around you, out of place somehow. These are clearly not boots, they're armor, possibly part of a larger set. These aren't just boots, are they? This is part of the armor he was stripped off. Indeed. Technically speaking, these are sabatons, not boots. What kind of armor is the same way? Ceramic plate. Zirconium dioxide, most likely. This is where the make would be. Where? Under the hill. Fairweather. Fairweather model T500VE. I'm guessing that's vitreous enamel. This is advanced stuff. Where's the rest of it? Scavenged? Piece by piece. He's been out here for seven days. It would be odd if they didn't. We should keep a lookout for these pieces. The armor could yield information. This is one thing he might actually know. Maybe he's just wearing the boots? There was no rest of the armor? No, I think he had something precious underneath the clothes. They had to remove the jeans and shirt we found to get to it. And this kind of armor is often worn under fabrics. Nice. That makes sense. What if they just told him to strip before they hung him to demean him? They usually hang them completely naked for that. La puta madre, the Mazda, the Besmertis, and the like. This one still has his underpants. <laughs> fucking talking about underpants. Material looks fucking out of place. It is. It's expensive. 
We've requested similar material for our tactical units for years now. The constabularies deemed it too costly. In that time, we've lost six men to semi-automatics. I need to show you guys something very important. As Paige is gone, I've been joined by a different kind of co-host. Jengi, are you sleepy? Do you like your pillow? I love him. I love that dog. He he's really just oscillating between and just, just how much are we talking about anyway, Kim? For a full set, about four years of wages. Wow. For the northwest region of Revachol, an officer's average yearly income is five thousand five hundred real. Wait, I'm that's my yearly pay? Me. Not too much, yes. <sighs> Sounds pretty puny. Nah, pathetic. I need to hustle more and hate less. I have no idea what that means. How can a guy afford this expensive shit? That's for us to find out. My initial report on the area suggests he was a security guard for the Harbor Company. But that's just hearsay. What about your initial report, Kim? Just something I scraped together from my station. An area report on Martinez. I'm sure you did the same. Yeah, I totally did. He's not actually sure of that. He's just being tactful. These look pretty advanced for security guard. I agree. This equipment is way beyond what a guard can afford. Alright, let's knock on the boot. A small bell-like sound fills the air. Like tapping on the side of a porcelain cup. It sounds fragile. It's anything but. This material is a kinetic redistributor. It spreads kinetic energy horizontally from plate to plate, dissipating it entirely. See? Faint organic lines cover the plates where they separate into smaller ones. These plates then divide into smaller plates until there are hundreds of them altogether, like whirls of floorboards. The design looks organic influenced by highly resistant wood materials like lignum vitae and ebony perhaps what does this remind me of if trees were made of porcelain this is what their cross sections would look like let's touch it the smooth glossy surface fractures into ever more intricate interconnections peaking on the right sabaton where you notice the worlds are in the shape of a letter and number combination e50 100 1000 well, there's our serial number. Good. Can you read it to me? E50 100 1000. We have a make and a number. That's something. We can use the radio in my kinema when we're done. Either station can chase it for us. Hello? Hello, hello, Mr. PP. How are you? Hello, baby. Hello, baby Elmo. Can it? Oh. Oh. Hey, baby grandpa. Oh. Original stinky baby. Hello. How are you doing? You want to play Disco Elysium with me? Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Who's a good kitty? Mwah. Is this, isn't he photogenic and beautiful? He's like the opposite of Zangief. Who's your, who's your big boy? Who's your, who's your fat boy? Who's my fat baby? Who? Who's the baby grandpa? What are you doing, baby grandpa? What, what are you doing? Let's pull the boot off, Elmo. This feels dangerous. Are you sure? Let's grab the boot. The stench fills your nostrils. As you push downward, an ominous creaking sound comes from above. 
Stop! Pig's gonna pull his head off. <laughs> Brutal! Oh, this is a bad idea, isn't it? You're going to pull his head off. Do it, homo! I am not a homo. Stop obsessing about your sexuality, officer. You are about to seriously compromise the coroner's case. What are you trying to achieve, anyway? Why are you hanging on to that boot? I was looking for clues in the boots, dude. How many clues do you need? You already found the number. Besides, there's no way you're getting them off. All the organic matter in his body has been flowing down into the boots. They are fused to his feet now. Why do you think the locals haven't scavenged them yet? You're sure there's a way to peel them off. But first, the body needs to be down. And second, it would probably be better if the lieutenant wasn't around. Interfacing. That sounds like a great plan. The anticipation makes you crack your fingers. Feels nice. Nice and cracky. So what's going to happen to the boots then? Processing will take care of them. With the situation in the morgue, it will yield nothing. But we must pick our fight. Should we continue? Alright, let's uh, look at the corpse. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. Let's check out the belt the hangman's knot is pulled tight by the weight of the corpse below yellow oh i've used hard these edged polyester cuts into his neck above a sliding buckle ties the belt to the branch this is a steel reinforced cargo lashing belt big brother of the red well okay nothing belt. that extreme it's used for tying cargo but, under uh, six but i've used airships. these to tie down pallets something like this Don't ask me how I know, but this is a lashing belt used for airlifting cargo. Airlifting? I thought it was used on lorries for strapping cargo to them. Apparently this is a reinforced kind for air transports. My brain tells me that. The local harbor uses six rotors to shuffle containers around. I get the sense they use whatever was on hand without paying much attention to not incriminating themselves. We're assuming dock workers did it? I'm still approaching this as a lynching, yes. Motivated by the ongoing strike. You? No. You feel like it was something else. I but feel like what? it was something else. Yes. It often is. This bell worries me. I sure want him to stay up there. That's a fucking belt. I was afraid it would be. Thin steel wiring. Parallel strands. This makes getting him down more problematic than I had assumed. How'd they even get up there? A noose is one of those things that's easier to use one way around. They climb up using the kid's ladder? That ladder can't carry a grown man. I didn't see any splintering either, did you? I think they lassoed the branch, then pulled on the belt to close the buckle. Alright. The cadaver hangs from the cargo belt. Hold up. Limbs limp and torso covered in tattoos. You look fucking dead. You look like a fucking dog corpse. Let's hit the tattoos. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso, from the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time they intersect, a small white star is formed in their crossing. Hundreds of fading asterisks. Riddle that sounds like skin. a cool fucking the concentration is tattooed around his heart his corpse is marked by stars what about mine alcohol and heartbreak <sighs> is this some kind of national thing of no nation that i know of if anything it reminds me of religious illumination last or penultimate century 
Men who live harsh lives often turn to innocentic worship. But which one? I see no trace of a humanoid figure. We're missing something. I agree. He takes a thin piece of milled aluminium from his coat pocket and pulls it open. Sounds like a sword being unsheathed. A small lens appears. Some sort of camera. What is that, Kim? A Trigget Sunshine. Mini. Trigget is the world's leading manufacturer of intercommunication devices, primarily projectors. The camera before you looks familiar somehow. Shit, Kuno! What the fuck is that? An instant color camera. This is the first time he openly acknowledges the kid's existence. Oh, that's true. I have only two ampoules, so nobody move. I don't want to waste one. A sound, a shrill flash, followed by the breaking of a small ampoule of glass. You see streams of color pour onto the thick, glossy piece of paper, rolling out. In case we need it. Cool machine, dude. Yes. It is pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> it sure is! There is only one ampoule left. Use it wisely. What do we need this for, anyway? It contains insight to the victim's person. By his build, I'd say this was a man of physical violence. The story he wanted his body to tell was important to him. It is his letter. To us. Someone should decipher it. We need to show it around. Can I have it? I should look at it later without the corpse smell. Sure. Just don't lose it. The glossy-eyed corpse looks by, his mouth mute, and his skin as colorful as the chemical rainbow on the photo paper, teeming with opportunistic organisms. Let's look him in the eye. His eyes are milky white and blind to the world, protruding comically from their sockets. There is no one home, just subaquatic terrors there. Dark brown hair grows on his head. His face is ready to explode from the organic processes inside. The death's head grin has passed. What remains is an unrecognizable mess. Hey guys, I gotta go check on Elmo. He's doing some stupid shit. I'll be right back. I promise you all I will be acclimating to this new situation shortly. Elmo decided to run upstairs and cry at the gate that I put up. Sangeef! And then he wanted to come back downstairs like two seconds later. Underneath the curdled meat there is an expression, not carried on his features, but below inside an expression of pleasure this man was experiencing joy at the moment of his death who are you dead guy i'm gone where have you gone into the wow pile yonder where's that in the past way out west i can see you're gone but who are you I'm a joke. Look at me. You are now, but who were you when you were alive? A killer. A motherfucker. And a killer. Alright. Go ahead, Kobo. What's happening? What do you mean? I mean, I'm talking to you. It's the power of your... Imagination. Yeah, man! Don't be crazy! Inanimate objects and dead people can't really talk to you! Your wild imagination is doing this! Ask some more of those questions you love so much! 
He loves those. Why do I love questions so much? Because you're a copper Look at all of them go. Do you want more questions? Give me a comical amount of questions. Coming right up, copper Rooney Rooney. This is getting upbeat now. Is my name Rooney? Fuck no. You're no Rooney. I do strike myself, however, as a Rooney. No, you don't. Between you and me, your name is probably Harry. Why do I feel like I've forgotten something terrible? Because you have. Who killed you? Love did me in, brother Copo. It was love all along. Can you ask me a question? Sure, Lobo. I can ask you a question. Why are you doing this? What? Looking at my face. Motionless. Looking into my eyes. Standing here. Why are you investigating my murder? I don't really have anything else. I'm all you have? Then you truly lost it all, brother. You let the world drag it all away from you. And what it left, you pissed away. And here we are. Why were you feeling pleasure when you died? Maybe I was getting my rocks off. So you're feeling sexual arousal when they hung you? Do I look like an erotic auto asphyxiation type to you? No. Captain Coppo Dromo, I fear we are drifting away, fixating on sexuality again. Let's go with a simpler question. He didn't choke himself. You know it. I hate you. You stink and you are boring. Do I remind you of someone? A child born with Muller's disease, Harlequinism, grown up miraculously. Harlequin, baby. You sure wrinkled out of that one, Coppolini. All right, enough. Come back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. All right, let's take a step back. As you narrow your eyes, the monster before you blurs into a violent mess of green and pink. Let's look at it. Only the lower extremities are pink with a dash of blue. His fatted hands, thighs, and his neck just above the noose. The rest of the corpse appears dark green in the cold spring air. Kim, I'm squinty. Why am I squinting, Kim? How should I know why you are squinting, officer? We're gonna squint harder. His face and hands are pink. Thighs, too. Rest is green. Oh. <laughs> you are trying to assess lividity. All right, let's relax. The monster comes back into focus. An explosion of color coursing with dark marbled veins. His stomach appears pregnant with something. Black liquid streams down his thigh and onto his boot. So what do you think? Something's come out of him. A pool of blood and feces has eaten into the frozen mud below the man's feet. Purge liquid is dripping into it, drop by drop. The victim appears to have contained no more than half a kilogram of digestion at the time of death. The fuck he's saying? Oh, f talking about shit. Yeah, goddamn right I am. Malicious laughter erupts in the yard. Sounds like seagulls. <laughs> Big head, he's a <laughs> The lieutenant's face is made of stone. <laughs> oh, poor Kim. I think he's dead, Kim. I agree. There are crow's feet in his eyes. He's laughing silently. His personality is no longer a part of the world. Totally dead.
Kim, I love you! I don't know what to think. What do you think, Kim? I think he was upright immediately after death. Blood has gathered in his hands and feet, and his neck. The noose acted like a tourniquet, keeping the blood in his head. The hypostasis here is in tune with the hanging. That's what I think. Could it be he was moved after his death? There's always a chance. We should check for ligament marks on his neck to see if they're in tune with the belt. We'll have to get him down first. You got beaten up. You see the bruises? I do. Most of them are post-mortem. Maybe even all of them. The delinquents have made our jobs harder with their little spawn. Zangi! You leave your brother alone. He's old. Stop talking in riddles, coin slot. He means you fucked him up good, Kuno. Fucked him up all right. like. Let's back off. But there is no breath to catch. Only the cadaver filling the air and your nostrils. He so how the fuck do we get him down? We Are you sure we finished the preliminary examination of the cadaver? We might miss some of these things once he's done. Let's take another look. The cadaver slowly twists on the cargo belt. His torso covered in tattoos and extremities blotched pink and blue. What about corpse man? Of course. You Enough. have quite come back. Yeah, prelim's done. A the steel reinforced belt presents a unique challenge. I brought chain cutters, but I don't see a good angle of approach to the belt. The cadaver is a good 1.2 meters up. Neither one of us can reach the belt without assistance. And even if we do, there's the question of cutting the airship strength material. Well, that was obvious. Maybe we can shoot him down! Yeah! Bang bang time, pig! Shoot his head off! How? Shoot the belt. Buckle will break. It absolutely will not, officer. That's not how physics work. It will maybe cut one thread loose. Yeah, now we're talking. Entertain the Kuno with some shit. They'll miss! The pigs will miss Kuno! The lieutenant is undecided. On one hand, he wants to shoot some gun. On the other, it's an awfully stupid idea. Why don't you let me try it? The lieutenant's brow is furrowed. He appears too deep in concentration to even notice what you said. Take the shot, Lieutenant. What's the worst that could happen? I'll blow his head off. Take it! Take the shot! Yeah, take the shot! Kuno wants some of that shit! Silence. With his elbow sharp, the Lieutenant unzips his jacket and produces a lightweight firearm. He drops a paper cartridge in the barrel, separates the scouring stick, and gives the cartridge five tucks, securing it in place. That's a Kiel A1990 armistice, mass-produced muzzle loader, ascetic, frugal, one of the most common firearms in the world. He then steps back and assumes the fellow's stess position, taking aim. The corner of his eye twitches. His finger is on the trigger. He's gonna fucking miss! The deep voice is drowned in a shrill blast that echoes off the walls of the surrounding tenements. A cloud of smoke slowly parts in the air as the lieutenant steps back and says to himself, God damn it. He feels bad about it. About his eyes, mostly. Just having bad eyesight. Probably from a young age. Whatever you do, do not console him. Fucking idiot! Look about asshole! Kuno could have hit it easy, but then Kuno's not fucking handicapped, is he? What now? I have to say, it's beginning to look unlikely we can get him down without assistance. I mean, why can't we just... C can I have the gun? It's bad as it is. 
us shooting firearms like punks. Go ahead, I'm not stopping you. Just don't lose it. <laughs> I only have one gun! This is the sorriest pair of pigs Kuno's ever seen. Take the gun. Yeah, take it, you fucking banani poika! Take it and shoot yourself in the mouth! Let's feel the weight. The cold piece of bakelite and gunmetal is surprisingly light. Your fingers fit right through the guard, instinctively resting on the trigger. You've held this, a P9 armistice, before. At some point, it probably used to be your choice of firearm. It still feels comfortable, like you never laid it down. The fuck are you waiting for, Kuno? Tell him to shoot himself in the mouth! Point the gun at the belt. The buckle comes into focus in your sights. You stand with your feet planted firmly in the ground and your left hand. Hey, buddy, you want to help me shoot the gun? Why don't you just shoot yourself in your f mouth? At least you won't miss. Close left eye. Your field of view narrows. The branch slowly moves, becoming entirely two-dimensional. The metal buckle glimmers, catching the morning light as the corpse slowly rotates. Look, he's crying! You gonna cry now, fucking faggoty? <sighs> Guys, can you buff my motorotics? Motorotics? Mot mot motorobics? But thank you. <sighs> yeah, the buckle explodes into tiny pieces, coming loose with a whir. With your hand numb from the recoil, you look at the body slump down. For a moment, the man appears to kneel in front of you, looking straight at you, helpless, trapped within itself. Who killed you? Communism. Damn it! Shit! It takes a millisecond for the association to flash within your cortex. You have no idea where it's coming from, only that it's right then the rigor in his muscles gives up and he smashes sideways into the spring mud letting out a horrid stench i'm i'm going for this one or this one one or four they're both good i guess we're going with number one you have been policed ace is high <gasps> the ace is high a custom invented by the aerostatic brigades during the revolution is used to celebrate success in Revachon, especially in sports. The gesture is spread across the world despite the defeat of the revolutionaries themselves. You could add an ace's low to it, if you like, by turning your back after the high and waiting for another. I'm gonna slap it and wait for an ace's low. The high arrives with a sharp slap. As you turn around, there is a moment of doubt. Feels like that low ain't gonna connect. Chill. It's gonna connect. But then it does. Yeah! And with furious precision, the lieutenant is not one to leave an ace's low hanging. I knew these guys were f All right, what now? We will perform a field autopsy and determine the cause of death. But before... Excuse me. It looks like I feel like taking a break from the stench. I'm sorry to interrupt the jubilations here. Just a little breather before we do the autopsy. Field autopsy? Yes. The four phases of a murder scene. One, investigation of the scene. I'm satisfied with that part. The trash container, the prints. We've been thorough enough. Two. Initial examination of the victim. We were exhaustive in our efforts there. 
Good job. Three, field autopsy. This will not be pleasant or easy, and it will have to be performed on the scene. The fuck are they on about? Cops are gonna cut his shit up next! Four and final, transport of the coroner's case to the district morgue. I'll do that. God, these things. Don't we have, a, like, a doctor for that? No, you and I are detectives. The honorary rank of detective signifies our ability to handle the entire incident chain. From crime scene to autopsy to clean up, we do it all. Honorary rank? An honor and a burden attached to your rank. Mine is lieutenant detective, unfortunately. I can't tell you how tired I am of this corpse. I don't think I'm a detective, Kim. With shooting like that? Of course you are. Your station would not have assigned you to this case otherwise. All right, here's your gun back. In the meantime, we should try to interview Evrard Claire, the leader of the Union. Harbor property was clearly used in the hanging. The harbor just east of here. Getting in might prove a challenge, though. Or we could ask around for the representative of the logistics company. My initial information says the Wild Pines have sent some sort of strike negotiator to wrangle the control back from Evrard. Ah, you're talking about the list of initial interviews. Yes. And those were the interviewees. Let's go. We have two skill points. Ace is low. <gasps> two empathy towards Kim! The Insulidian Civil War was not the first war to see the hybrid of airships on both sides, but it was the coolest. For an entire decade, folded multi-rotor fighters got into dogfights above Revachal, Ozon, Seminine, and the Arcade Islands, spitting death at one another. They flew over sandy beaches and shot each other out of the azure sky, crashing into city blocks and setting island forces abla ablaze. The Ace's Low was a custom among revolutionary brigades, performed after multiple kills. Lieutenant Kisaragi seems fond of it, but why? Yeah. Eternalize! <laughs> Alright. Let's take a look at this fucking body. The rotting man lies on his side with his eyes looking straight through you. The belt is still around his neck. His body is supine and open to intrusion by autopsy. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. What's exactly a field autopsy? Come on, officer. You know what a field autopsy is. You've done a hundred of them. What you do know is, at 18.9 kilometers, the dormant shield volcano, Corpus Windy, is the world's highest summit. And the failure of the 38th single, Epui de Saint, to crack the top 20, was the death knell of disco. But what a field autopsy is, you have no idea. The fuck, encyclopedia, it's useless. Why don't no why don't you know? Why do you know all that shit? You don't know this. You must have me confused with the Copperpedia. Can I talk to the Copperpedia? You, sir. You are the Copperpedia. Alright, let's get the fuck in there. There truly is a time for everything. Even for yellow gardening gloves. However, they are lacking hygienically. I suggest you get in there in limited capacity. I don't know what you're talking about. I mean when I need you to. Until then, I should handle physical contact and you should take notes. Just fill this in, right? That's right. You knew it because you inspected your ledger. The lieutenant is relieved you know the protocol. All right, let's open up the field autopsy form. The dead man stares in silence as you crack open the ledger. The bright red paper is covered in boxes and lists, describing the condition of his skin and organs in three parts. Above those, an 11 field info form needs filling out first. It begins with... All right, number one, assistant. It's you. <sighs> Only the first question, I already don't know the answer. Not an energetic start to an autopsy, I agree. Pig's messed up. Kuno feels pity. Just leave it empty, officer. Leaving it empty. The corpse lies there, indifferent to your retrograde amnesia. The next box says... Coroner's case number. KK57-0803. Dot 
0815. KK equals Kim Kitsuragi. 57 equals Precinct 57, followed by his date 0803 and time of arrival 0815 on the scene. He's indexed the case after himself, not you. I mean, that's fine. He's the actual fucking professional, but I'll see what you guys think. <laughs> like, Jesus Christ. I'm fucking this up. Next. Name. N -A. Next. Date of birth. N -A. Age. Hmm. Roughly 50. Right, roughly 50. The corpse looks ageless, like meat on a hook. Race? Mondial. Fair to olive skin from the Isola of Mwindi. This is as vague as it gets. You might as well say whitish. <laughs> Write it down. The pudgy mess of curdled meat looks neither Mondial nor anything other. Sex. Fucky, fucky. Thank you, Kuno S. Male. Got it. <laughs> Pigs could have sex. Male. Nor does he look male with his pregnant belly and indistinguishable face. Date of death. We're still going with March 4th, 51. Write it down. What else? Nine. Body identified by is non applicable. Ten. Case number is the same as the coroner's case. KK 57. 0503-0815 listens motionless with the cargo belt still around his neck. Only one box remains. Evidence of treatment. None. At least not after the initial examination. A strange word. Treatment. What does that mean, treatment exactly? Interfering with the body's position or wounds post-mortem. Don't overdo it. It's okay to be unsure. I'm not so sure. Look like he got carried here. They'd have to have incapacitated and carried him over. This man was more than a match for untrained dog walkers. Your central nervous system recognizes this gesture. It's the stations of the breath. Ecclesiastic, religious in nature, a holdout from pre-Delorean burial rites. It takes him two seconds to perform. Then, somewhere in Jamrock North, a small wood shed Behind Rosencrantz Row, Lieutenant Nick Feuerbach puts his hand to the chest of a small corpse, no larger than a monkey. It's raining outside, light drizzle. There is darkness in the shed. Elsewhere yet, an obese female sits in a wicker chair, her silhouette ball-like against the window. Outside, Grand Crudon. The day is turning dim for Sergeant Mac Dawson. Hand extended, he approaches. To make sure she is dead more than anything Oh, else. they fixed his fucking eyes! And so, all across Jamrock, Coal City, G-R-I-H, 42 deceased persons found today. 42 stations of breath. We should start the post-mortem. Alright, let's do it. The corpse cannot feel Kim's hand on his chest. It no longer meaningfully interacts with its surroundings. A thicket of boxes and lists on red copy of paper tries to answer why external examination summary clothes the deceased wears armored boots and white briefs the make of the briefs is babrodin i think let's see oh see it's happening babrodin yes inexpensive size m color white the disappointment is palpable <laughs> the red-haired thing was expecting something more lurid. Let's write it down. The boots are ceramic, vitreous enamel. They are fused to his skin from blood flowing downward post mortem. Removal of the boots is left for processing. It would be clever of you to omit the boots altogether, sire. If you are to keep them for yourself, as you ought to, you have deserved them more than anyone else. I mean, when am I going to get them? Patience. After the autopsy, before the body is taken away, there will be a window of opportunity after the lieutenant has gone to sleep i hope this has helped you my liege thank you drama i will admit the boots the boot has a serial number it's e50.100.100 
The lines between the plates are in the shape of the alphanumerical. The number is purposefully concealed by the design. Let's write it down. Tattoos. The upper torso is covered in a single, continuous tattoo, resembling a national pattern. It reaches from the right shoulder to the heart. The ink is blue and white. Continue. The assistant has a color photograph of the markings to be added to the case files as document A1. The photo is taken on the scene using a triggered mini. I'll write it down. The deceased has a belt for airlifting cargo around his neck, tied with a hangman's knot. Color, yellow. Length, three meters. There is a buckle on the other end. I'll write it down. Well nourished, athletically built, measuring 1.8 meters. Generally consistent with age, about 50. Preservation is good. Ambient temperature, below freezing. Write it down. Body hair is light brown. Distribution is consistent with the age. The deceased had male pattern baldness. Hair is combed back, short. I will touch the corpse. The hair under your latex fingers feels cold to touch. I what? will stroke his hair gently. The stench is suffocating. Strands of dark brown hair start sticking to the latex of the glove, like thread of a rag doll's head. There must be brilliantine in there. He's combed his hair back with oil. Let's write it down, the brilliantine. Lividity is consistent with hanging. The head is congested. Contusions are present on the head, chest, and thighs, consistent with stones thrown post-mortem. Low velocity. Fucking low velocity? You think Kuno doesn't know what you're talking about? Velocity was fucking max. Okay, Kuno, it was it was fucking max. Talking shit about Kuno's velocity. In addition, there are bite marks on the face, scalp, and chest, consistent with predation. Write it down. You get your mark. A steel wiring. Ah, there's too much of it. We need to remove the belt so we can get to the ligature mark. You got just the right tool for that. The chain cutters. Good thing we got these motherfucking chain cutters. Wait, pet them? Yeah, let's pet them. The hanged man lets out a joyous little bubble of rot from his nose. Let's pull these fucking chain cutters out. Always good to think ahead. Now, we need to cut the belt to see the ligature mark below. Carefully, with as much precision as you can. See? My pig is gonna fuck his head up. No, he ain't. Your pig's a boring fuck. Look for a good spot to cut. The belt is equally tight around the whole circumference of his neck, swelling over the edges like white bread rising from the east. The knot is the weak spot. The chain cutters fit in there, steady now, like a flower arranger. Two cuts and it should come loose. Guys, can you juice my physical, please? Can you juice my physical? Come on, just a little bit of physical. Let's get physical, physical. I wanna get physical. Thank you. After oh. some deliberation, you sink the cutters into oh. the tie in the belt together. You squeeze the rubber hand. It'll make me dumber, yeah, but it only lasts for 30 seconds. Brow. Snap, the knot is slashed. Another cut, and the belt falls apart like a flower bouquet, revealing the dead man's neck and the dark red ligature mark around it. The rope rises to a point, leaving a gap in the ligature mark. The suspension point is in the back of the neck. As it ought to. This is where its grip on the curdled meat is gentlest, pulling up. Hemorrhaging is observed on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. The mark is well pronounced, consistent with a drop from 1 or 1.5 meters. Write it down. Chest is intact. 
Normal control. Abdomen is protuberant. Pelvis intact. Genitalia... No! <laughs> Let's get out of and see! I fucking knew it! This is clearly what they've been waiting for. Ever since the autopsy began. The lieutenant is trying to make it as boring as possible. Genitalia is male and unremarkable. No evidence of injury. I'm going to inspect his penis. The dead man's penis is average sized, congested from the downward collection of blood. The testicles are uneven in length, hanging underneath. The genitalia is greenish. Marbling is present around Does it look like he was enjoying his death moment? Ah yes, your hunch before. We can have a semen analysis requested from processing, if that's what you meant. I would actually like that, yes please. Mm -hmm. Just write down that we request an analysis. The corpse with his pants down does not have an opinion on the subject. All he has is genitals and a deathly odor. Write it down, add a semen. Back is symmetrical and intact. Upper and lower extremities are intact, but asymmetrical. There are combat injuries on the right hand, thigh, and hip. In addition, I see smaller, residual scars, too numerous to count, covering about 30% of his skin. Write it down. Last item, hands. Takes the man's right hand in his, inspect it. I will also pick up the hand. His flesh is cold. I see. Pleased to meet you. Where are you from? And what's your name? I'm, uh, my name is... I'm only fucking with you. I know where you're from. From Cappadocia. And your name is Il Cobo. What can I do for you, Il Cobo di Cappadocia? It was good to hold your hand. Did you like it when I stroked your hair? I did, Kobo, I did. Reminded me of when I was just a small boy. Before this happened to my face and my body. You did me a kindness there. We should do this more often. Be close like this. I mean... Hands are clean. No sign of injury from struggling. We expect any? I was. Maybe I'm just not seeing them. Honestly, this stench is making it hard for me to think at the moment. All right, let's write it down. Ooh, that's all for the external. Well done. What next? Internal examin examination. Central nervous system. I have Nobody. nothing. Do you have anything on this man's central nervous system? Of course, there is a moral to be drawn from it. A moral to this story. All right, let's add a fucking moral to the story. What would that be? The dead man looks, too, with barely contained excitement to hear the moral of his story. I mean, the brain is very vulnerable to uh, compromise in its blood supply. That's true. I think that may well be the moral of every story, officer. All right, I'll write N.A. Good. Musculoskeletal. Purge fluid is coming from the mouth. Not injury related. Eyes and tongue protuberant. Hyoid bone. Let's see. With his eyes almost closed, the lieutenant puts his hand on the dead man's throat and begins to massage it gently. A rotting smell erupts from the mouth. Purge fluid runs down his lips, black and viscous. Great. Yeah, jack that fucker off. The hyoid bone is fractured. The rest of the musculoskeletal system is intact. Unremarkable. Write it down. Respiratory system. Oral cavity shows no lesions. The victim has received a dental implant, possibly after a combat wound. Mouth swollen. Hemorrhaging present in mucose of the lips and mouth. From here, it looks as though the clown-faced man is screaming. The tendons of his jaw are torn apart. Hyoid, ripped from the force of the lieutenant's hands. Guys, can you boost my um, 
Motororix. Motorotix. Thank you. No scream. No sigh of relief rises from the darkness inside. It's humid there. Sickly sweet air, unlike anything living. You feel like you're about to throw up again. Straight in that mouth of his. Let's look deeper. It's hard. Once more, you taste stomach acid in the back of your throat. A contraction. Your throat pumps a little something from your stomach and into your mouth. You're forced to swallow, just to keep looking. Inside, you see darkness. Just a mess of meat and darkness. There are ancient mysteries down there, Kobo. Ask me later. Thanks, Inland. Hemorrhaging present in mucus. Write it down. Hepatobiliary. N.A. Why don't we have anything? Ah. Are you a hepatobiliary expert? I don't know. Neither am I. Well, what is it? That's it. Alright. Same for toxicology and serology. N.A. Both? Unless you haven't tapped reservoirs of knowledge there. I mean, there's a completionist in me that wonders if there's something else we could do. We already have one test as per regulation. And we already requested semen. Pigs requested semen like it's no big deal? I'm not even interested in these boring mulkers anymore. I haven't sucked him off for anything. No, that's good. I want to know about the cum. Leave it NA, then. Cardiovascular. The body exhibits heavy lividity. Blood has gathered in the hands, feet, and neck. Hypostasis is visually consistent with the hanging. Write it down. Gastrointestinal. This will do. Digested semi-solid food in stomach. Voila. I'm gonna admit the voila. What's next on the list? Description of injury summary. Let's see. We have bite marks, contusions on the head and chest, and a ligature mark encircling the neck. You'll need three fills. Leave a fourth one too. What's the fourth one for? Nothing. Just in case. All right, bite marks. Head, chest, and scalp bite Stop mark injuries. Stop licking my foot, please. Predation by birds has caused damage to the body. Odontologist does not need to be consulted. Write it down. And your opinion, officer? Non-fatal, post-mortem. Agreed. Next injury? Contusions. So, the scalp bleeds from a post-mortem head injury. A stone. The injury does not have the rim of an early inflammatory response. A perpetrator on the scene has confessed to causing it post-mortem. Velocity, fucko. Has confessed to causing it at maximum velocity. Can't write it down. Coagulated blood sticks to his scalp and chest, where the countless stones have hit the dead man. Beneath the description of injury, two boxes. Non-fatal post-mortem. Right. Next. Ligature mark. A dark red abraded ligature mark encircling the neck, with a gap on the nape measuring, let's say, seven centimeters. The hyoid bone is fractured, the cervical colon intact. I see hemorrhaging on the skin, above and below the ligature mark. Depth of the mark, one centimeter. No signs of clawing on the neck. Write it down. Below the note, two customary boxes wait to be ticked. The man's head jerks to the side. The ring around his neck is visible. This was not, he was not hung. To, 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 he was hung after he was murdered, for sure. Non-fatal, post-mortem. <clears throat> he is deep in thought. Eyes fixed on the bright red ring around the dead man's neck. Why do you say that? I don't think it was this injury that killed him. Okay. Why don't you think it was fatal? Why aren't his hands tied? Big guy like this? tie his hands when you march him to the gallows. Honestly, I'm not sure there weren't marks on his wrist. 
That part got blurry for me. The stench. But you are right, I was ready to call this. Now I think we should leave it empty, at least for the time being. Let's wrap this up. I pronounced this field autopsy over. How'd it go? It was a... an irregular field autopsy. We did not establish cause of death, which is supposed to be the goal of an autopsy. But, personally, I do not see this as a parameter for success. We requested a test to be run on the genitals, but was the règle. The results should arrive in a couple of weeks, if we are lucky. Weeks? My breath. What else? We were thorough with the list of injuries, too. We described them all in detail. What is there to say? Given the circumstances, it was a professional field autopsy. What now? I need a copy of that autopsy form. Then I will drive him to Faubourg. Here you go. For processing. He's thinking, did I miss something? Guys, I need some motororix. Give me some motororix. Give me some buffs. I need more perception. Come on. Give me some motorborborix. Come on. Give me motorborborix. You run your hands over the victim's cold body. His limbs, his torso with its swollen organs. Maybe you should be more thorough. Look at his pants again. The genitals in his breeches continue to be unnoteworthy. You see the penis of a dead man. Damn it. If you've seen it once, you've already got the picture. Can't get enough of that dick. I, I can't. Do you think we missed something? You can't shake the feeling that there are more secrets concealed. In the flesh before you. There's more to this fucking corpse, Kim. Okay, well, we are in leave of Mortis here. He is disintegrating. We need to refrigerate the body if we want to conduct another examination, and we need to do it fast. I know where we got a fridge. Hey, wasn't there a giant ice bear sarcophagus below that building? An absolutely colossal fridge, still plugged in, literally in the shape of an ice bear. Yes. Now, I've rarely been disappointed by the size of a giant ice bear fridge, but I think we should still take a look at it first. Make sure it's big enough before we carry him over. Let's move. With every hour, whatever we are looking for in the deceased will become harder to find. The man is decomposing visibly now. Every hour, he looks less like a creature and more like a pile of intestines. The lieutenant adjusts his glasses and takes a deep breath. Let's go put him in the fucking fridge first. I'm aware of my levels, jackasses, but I want to get this fucking guy in the fridge. I can examine him in the fridge. His eyes are still glowing red, watching over all the ice cream wrappers hidden inside its belly. What do you think about the fridge, Cam? Looks big enough for two corpses. It's certainly an eccentric choice, but it is capacious and cold enough, too. But the optics on this are awful, he thinks. We need to be as silent as we can. <laughs> Shall we go and get the body, then? I'll take the head, you take the feet. The stairs won't be easy, but we'll manage. Let's fucking do it. The body is heavier than oh, you hey, expected buddy. and oh, stinkier. Oh. Did it I scare takes you with my sneezes? Half an hour to get it down to the basement. Then, ten more minutes to stuff it into the fridge. The lieutenant takes a step back to admire your handiwork. Beautiful. A dead body in a nice bare fridge. This is some of the best police work I've ever done. I'm not sure I believe you, Kim. Of course you don't. Look at that. What have we done? We stuffed a dead body in a nice bare fridge. This does not leave this room. 
We did our best with the means we had, Kim. Did we, though? Okay, maybe we did. At least we've stopped the body from decomposing further. Now you can conduct another inspection. See? Under control. See, fuckers? I can check the body now. Inside the icy realm of the ice beer fridge, the corpse stands slumped, waiting. Come on, guys. Give me a motobobics. Give me a motobobics. How's it pronounced? Motorix. Oh, that's much easier than I've, what I've been saying. Give me a Motorix. Your yes! eyes reach out and your eyes close, as if by their own volition. It's dark all around. You feel cold, slippery flesh. First with your fingertips, it's right under the palm of your hand. What is this? His face, his cheeks, his nose, his fat, swollen lips. Like a rubber spider, your gloved hand crawls on his features. Everything is silent, all around. Let's crawl up his nostrils. They are swollen shut. You need to really push to get in. Let's touch something else. You're not far. It'll come to you. Keep crawling. Fingers in his mouth. The oral cavity is cold and moist. A ball-like tongue attaches itself to the base of the mouth, lolling around like a scallop. You're on the right track. Play with it. Yeah, let's play with it. The tongue moves freely in the cavity. The mucus of the mouth is slippery, fragile, even through the latex. From the soft meat, teeth are budding. Hard pearls of bone in the gums and in the back of the mouth. Can you feel it? You're so close. Rip his jaws open now. Look in. Let's look. A vision of black and dark red death, pried open by your hands and studded with teeth. Looks like he's laughing. Death fumes rising from his throat. And there, in the back of his mouth, above the bell of the uvula, right in the soft palate. Hey, can somebody... Time out Lion Kun for like the entire day. Please. Or actually for like a week. And, uh, let's see. Naoi O also? <sighs> Max temp bands a week? Great, do it. You see a hole, barely visible to the human eye. It is swollen shut, almost vanished. No larger than 0.4 centimeters in radius, the edges appear darkened. Fuck yeah. Mm hmm. Keep going. Touch it with your finger. Gently. A black trickle of liquid runs into his throat from the. Also, wound. don't complain. You're lucky I'm deciding to time you out for a week instead of banning you. Put our finger in. Your index fits right in there. A tight tunnel of flesh opens up. Tissue damage. Wide enough for two fingers. As you push both in, you reach through his mouth. Right into his brain stem. Brain stem, huh? Yes, that's what this part is called. Let's feel around. The basal ganglia feels clumpy. What entered here has torn apart his reptilian complex. This man will never sleep again. Never wait. Let's push. Your yellow fingers slide into the remains of the limbic system. There is no resistance. It's gelatinous. The slug-like structures are damaged too. 
The tearing extends deep into both hemispheres. The ululations of the limbic system have ended. All is quiet. There is a cavity here, cut right between the two hemispheres. The lieutenant answers with the sound of his pen on paper. Push deeper. Your fingers are all the way in now, reaching toward the inside of his skull. The cavity goes further, but the entry wound isn't wide enough for the rest of your hand to follow. Wriggle, wriggle. Your fingers reach toward his skull. His cerebral cortex feels like jelly. Cold jelly. Strange fluid streams down your wrist as you push deeper until you feel it on the tip of your finger. Ice cold serrated metal. Its edges cut right through the latex and into your finger. Feel a solid object under the skull. Can you. can you get to it? I will inspect the skull first. There's a tiny crack, a protrusion in the cranium, right in the back of his head. Your finger must be pointing straight at it from the inside. The object that is in there stops just short of the skull in the encephalus, knocking this tiny fracture into the cranium. We have the makings of a very small exit wound here. That's as high as it goes. Let's fish it out. Success. You pick the object between your index and middle finger. It feels sharp, like metal. With your face twisting from pain and concentration, all you need to do is just... I got it. Good, good. Let's pull it out. The inside of the head feels cold and smooth, like a glove. Sweat dripping down your brow. Careful not to lose the prize between your fingers. With a plop, your hand emerges from the mouth. The garden glove is covered in blood right up to the wrist. Between your fingers, a small flower. A blossom made of lead. I knew it. A bullet. Drop it in. The bullet falls in the bag, leaving a smattering of blood on the plastic. He raises the bag under his eyes and says, I did know about this for my first time playing. The last, the last thing I ever did in my own playthrough was the interview that follows this. So lucky me, I didn't actually get spoiled by those dumbasses, but it helps to set a precedent. A non-calibre, rifle, some kind of brittle alloy, fractured on impact. Keep it, Lieutenant, it's a gift. No, no, you deserve it. We can log it later. We need to add an item to the injury list. Injury number four. Oval entry wound with an abrasion collar. Soft palate, back of mouth. High velocity. Temporary cavity in brain tissue. Small exit wound on the occiput. How does that sound? Sounds about right, Kim. Opinion, fatal injury. Goddamn absolutely fucking right. And one last thing. We can now fill in injury number three. Ligament mark. Opinion, non-fatal, post-mortem, treatment. He's proposing the bullet was the real cause of death, and the hanging an attempt to conceal this fact. Absolutely. Yes, and the belt around his neck, the hanging, even dragging him to the yard. All of it was done after this man was already dead. Dead. Daba doop doop. Dead, 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 dead. Agreed. I have had my doubts since you showed me the tracks. Why did they carry him over? Why not march him, I thought. There was no satisfying explanation. There have been other signs too, small things. We were right not to assign hanging as cause of death, as the perpetrators expected we would. No such luck for them. Find the bullet before you get fooled? I forgot about that. I assume that means we could have been chasing the wrong leads for a while. We didn't fall for it, he thinks. There's pride in there. There is, of course, the very real possibility he was both shot and hanged. Is it possible they shot him while he was hanged? To put him out of his misery? It's possible, but it doesn't explain all the other dubious things here. 
lack of struggle primarily. I may be intellectually sloppy, but I prefer one theory at a time. And this just smacks of treatment to me. Who would do this? That's for us to find out. But this, it will make finding them just a little easier. Why would anyone do this? To hide something. The real killer? The real motivation? What really happened here? I think I need to wash myself. Oh, you really, really do. <laughs> I'm glad to hear you say that. Your room in the whirling in rags should come with a bathroom. Be sure to make use of it in the evening. Maybe the bullet uh, needs more acid. Acid. Yes, we should take a closer look at it. I am certain it has more to tell us. This little thing could reveal much about the weapon that shot it. So what next? We bag the corpse and carry him to the holding pen of my kinema. I can transport him to processing myself, but I will be gone for the rest of the day. You'll be gone? Well, what should I do? Work on the case. Tend to personal matters. Try not to do anything too dangerous. An officer needs backup in a neighborhood like this. I'll leave that choice to you. And one more thing. Great work, detective. After you bag the corpse, Lieutenant Kitsuragi will leave the party until tomorrow morning. You can do side tasks, and even the main case, but it might be more difficult. Plan his exit accordingly. No, well, uh, you can bag him later, Kim. Rigorous self-critique. Here it is. Hard facts from the man you are. You once jerked off in the locker room and were caught. You held a young woman by the arm and kept her in your apartment for 20 minutes against her will. That's right. That's not These very not funny at all. Of fancy. These are real deeds, Harry, emerging from the darkness of your past. You tried shooting a fleeing suspect in the foot, but hit him in the pelvis, crippling him for life. And above all, you let life defeat you. All the gifts your parents gave you, all the love and patience of your friends, you drowned in a neurotoxin. You let misery win. And it will keep on winning till you die or overcome it. Well, the benefits are good at least. Kim, yeah, we're going to send the body tomorrow. We're going to have to... I'm going to have to take a look at the body myself. Um, the bear's eyes are still glowing red. It's guarding over the freezing corpse hidden inside its belly. Tell me something, dead man. Shoot, loony Rooney. How do you like the fridge? I like it a lot, brother. This really is your finest hour. You're a genius. A regular Coppolangelo. At the autopsy, you said you had ancient mysteries. Oh, yes, Kobo Milobo. In the gift horse's mouth. Tracts and wakes and waterways. Ancient material. Oh, that's what he is. But to where, brother? Just a small gulp away. My beloved Kobo. A small gulp away. I like all these little hints about his mouth. So which was it that killed you? Love or communism? Huh? You said love killed you, but when you fell down, you said it was communism. You're misquoting me, Rooney. I said communism killed me. Love did me in. Interesting. That's a Come nice. back later, Coppo. Amuse yourself with my frank manners and my memento mori features. If possible, also, see me in your dreams. Thanks, dude. All right. Now that is a successful yes. investigation. This orange machine is dead still. You slip your fingers. No. 
If you want to equip the pry bar by go All right, I need some kind of super pry bar. Look for the die at the bottom of the chimney. I'm pretty sure I already did that. All right, let's look around for cans. Not even joking. Oh, those guys are new. That lady's new. And then we're gonna go to Frit. And sell the cans that I have. Roses, dozens. Will I save the game? I should probably save the game. I like how you guys are like, Pat, Pat, don't do the autopsy. You can screw up the autopsy so bad. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Welcome to Frit. Feel free to look around or something. Everything is out on the shelves. What's that magazine she's reading? What's a Frit? I don't know. Frit? Why is it written with three T's? I think they think that the extra T makes it funkier. It doesn't. The story goes that normal Fritta with two T's, a men's workwear shop in Vredefort, was already taken. So when Fritta Retail Inc. grew into a multinational corporation, they had to add an extra letter to avoid trademark infringement. What are you reading? You mean this? This is Pop Stars. It's got like famous people in it. It's not for sale. Looks like it also has something called Police de la Mode featured on page 34. This speaks to you. Stupid famous people. Yeah, they're kind of boring, but, you know. I got some questions for you. Um, okay. I'm not really supposed to be chatting to anyone, but... Does you guys have a warehouse in the back of the Whirling and Rags? A warehouse? I don't know. Maybe. I don't really care what Frit does. Give me, give me, give me something to fucking work with. She looks up from under her brow. Fine. Frit doesn't have a warehouse. Just a little back room here, okay? Tell me anything about the dead body. Um, I don't really know anything. I mean, I know it's there, but I haven't seen it, so... Do you know the man who died? Not really. What do you mean, not really? You mean you knew him a little? Um, no. I didn't know him at all. How long has it been there? I don't know. Really long. What do you think happened? Um, I don't know. No need to worry. It's just standard procedure for us to ask around. If you hear anything, let us know, okay? Okay. Thank you for your help, miss. Uh-huh. Tell me about this reality. Reality? You mean, what reality? Economic reality, or? She is like a student unexpectedly called upon by a teacher. Can she answer the classroom question? Tell me about the economic reality, please. I don't really know anything. I mean, I'm 15. 15 is an excellent time to learn about economic reality. Yeah, that's why I'm working my ass off in Frit. So I guess, like, that's economic. What about the physical reality, then? I don't know. What about it? Where are we? We're in Frit. No, I mean, like, bigger. As mankind, or as a nation, or... What will her essay prompt be? As a nation, child. Um, we're in a... We're in, uh, we're in a uh, transition, you know, transitioning from uh, monarchy to democracy, all that stuff. What time is it? I don't know. Look at the clock. It's right behind you on the wall. The clock shows the time at 10.09. The hands seem to be still. 
It's apparent the clock doesn't work. How's uh, Ace's low doing? Still got 47 minutes to go. What's the revolution? When ordinary people take over the government and um, demand democracy. What about the one we had here in Revishal? Yeah, it happened like 50 years ago or so. Sorry, I'm not very good at this. At history, I mean. Tell me about uh, what's the coalition. What's the coalition about? Our government? Or do you mean something else? Sorry, I really need to finish this article. Zangief! Zangief! Stop doing whatever you're doing. I will not bother you with this shit anymore. Cool. Leave. How do I... S oh, that's the can machine, isn't it? The tear machine stands in the corner. A sign says, one bottle equals ten cents. Bottles away. Your bottles clunk into the machine, and the money appears with a satisfying jingle. You're a richer man now. You're 100% sure you've got special hobo cop money for that tear. At least 100% extra tear money. If the numbers on the machine told you otherwise, it's a lie. That was weird. A small cabinet on the wall is filled with various medicine bottles, nasal sprays, and blister packs. They all bear the Saint Baptiste Pharmaceutics logo. Their logo is the bloodless rose, pure white, untouched by harm. Um, just ask me if you need anything from Saint Baptiste. We don't stock prescription meds, but we do have Nosafed, Duramine, Magnesium, and Hypnogamma. What does that? What does it do? Um, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> Nosafed is a nasal spray. Duramine is a really good painkiller. Magnesium is a dietary supplement. Hypnogamma is. I don't really know what hypnogamma is. I guess it makes you feel less shit. It's recommended to use after lots of partying, studying, or exercising. Could you be more specific? Um, no, sorry. I'm not like a doctor or anything. This is the realest. This is the realest character that has ever existed. Who's Saint Baptiste? Saint Baptiste, you know, the pharmaceuticals company. Saint Baptiste Pharmaceuticals. The one that sells meds out of Saint Baptiste. That one. There. She is right. Saint Baptiste, the company, Thank derives you. its name from Saint Baptiste, the city. Itself so named because that's what it is. A rare case where that, that really is the full now. etymological history. As far as almost anyone knows, at least. Don't pout at me. Don't you pout. I see you pouting. Look, I'll show you. Look, I'll fucking show you. Zangief? Look, the dog is pouting. The dog is literally fucking pouting. Because I told him not to do it. Zangief. Buddy, hey. Hey. I love you. That's just his face? No, I... Listen. Listen, I know this dog. Okay? That dog is pouting. That dog pouts. Do you know what that dog does in the middle of the night if he tries to get out of the covers? And you're like, don't go out of the covers because you'll just get hot and whine? He stomps his feet. He goes, and stomps his feet. Like a tantrum. Like, urgh, I hate it. Who taught him that? He, he just learned it. He just, he's, he's an asshole. Hey. What is it? Do I look like a crazy person when the dog's not on the screen, but I'm talking to the dog? What is it, buddy? Well, yeah, okay. Thank you. Geef, you look like shit. <laughs> I 
Like he's doing this thing where he's like falling asleep, but he doesn't want to lie down for some reason. Thank you. Thank you. Hey. 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 Thank you. Hey. So alert. What an alert dog. Zangi, hey, look, high five. High five. Buddy, hey, hey, look at me. Look. Buddy, buddy, hey. Hello. He has no interest. He has no interest in this discussion. I'm just hoping he like falls over on camera because that's funny. <laughs> He's totally fucking falling asleep standing up. Buddy, 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 buddy. Just, oh, just, just go, uh, just sleep on your pillow. Or stand up. Just pick one. I laugh at him every day. Like I like me when me and Paige have a moment every single day when we just look directly at him and just start laughing our asses off. He's a fucking clown. Every day, he'll do something that is just so stupid. Like, he'll go upstairs, and he'll be like, what? And he'll be like, ooh, and look at you like he's a fucking... Doing a photo shoot with, like, his big dumb eyes. He's so stupid. Oh, my God. Anyway, leave. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath a display of croissants and juice bottles. The raincoats are transparent, except for the big Fritta slogan on the back. The packages are small, Say hey. discreet, hey. sloppily stacked, making them easier to take unnoticed. No need to worry about knocking over a display. What is that? What is what? Um, it's a raincoat. If you want to buy one, then it's only for Royale. Her attention is drawn to the raincoats. Stealing one undetected will now be more difficult. Damn it. Well, if I take my pants off, I'll steal better. You see several packaged raincoats fill a low shelf beneath the disc. The girl delves into the magazine, hair covering yeah! her face. Vision obscured. She cannot see your hand move. Down onto one knee, pretending to do up a shoelace. Take a loose package from the bottom. Slip it in the old sleeve. The girl doesn't notice a thing. Fucking raincoat! Hell yeah, endurance! Fuck yeah! Now I'm wearing it. A colorful display of cigarettes and alcohol bottles line the shop wall, inviting you closer. There, in that dark green glass, all in vain, the great flowing river of warmth, wine, alcohol, beer, alcohol, love, alcohol. This is not a good place for a recovering addict. Um, guess not, no. I'm obliged to inform you that both alcohol and cigarettes damage your health. But, I guess you already know that. Don't task. Don't look. Don't do anything here. Just go away. Get back to work. Alright, thanks Volition. And we got a bunch of skill points. Should I use- should I upgrade these skill points? Or should I... 
save them. I'm a little torn on this. Sangeef. Because I have three now. Keep one. Yeah, we'll we'll keep one. I'm gonna upgrade shivers. I'm gonna upgrade perception. And I'm that all that's what we're gonna do. And we'll keep one. Perception is my 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 signature pick. So I definitely want to have that one. And shivers is something people have been bugging me about since I started. Right. Oh. Did these just Let's go back to uh these checks. Let's go back to that lady and try shivering her her timbers. See that? I love him. Here, oh no 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 no! Shh. I just move. I move it for you. More comfortable. A thick layer of cold dust covers the furnace. It's dark and grimy here. In the darkness you can hear chatter. It's coming from above. The echo is so prominent, it's impossible to discern. What are you doing? Wait, really? I can't. Yeah, that, that dice is gone. That dice is just gone. Hey. I love dog. Dog, come here. Come here. Oh, dog. Oh, fat boy dog. I love this dog. He is fat. Oh. I'm, oh, man. I, do I need the goddamn flashlight to navigate this shit? Goddamn. Looks like I do. Again, are you looking for a die? Give me some physical, physical. Got wanna get physical? Yeah, yeah, the physical. Go physical, physical. Aside from getting naked, you're not sure what else to do. The building holds no more answers for you. Curses. What else we got? We got the backyard wall, sleeping dock worker, and the pile of a turnite. What the actual fuck is the pile of a turnite?
God, this sounds like Diablo sometimes. The soundtrack is so fucking excellent. I love that time doesn't pass when you're not talking to people. It's such a perfect ver- it's such a perfect- Oh. There's our interviewer. Why now there, Kuno? An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material, Etonite. I'm just gonna do it. I'm not gonna ask you guys for help. <gasps> because it's Ugh. nice and orderly, well-laid pallets. Easy on the eyes. It reveals no secrets at this time. Alright, what else we got? The backyard wall. And the sleeping dock worker. Where the fuck is the backyard wall? Try the dock worker. Gone. Great. You know what? It's my signature skill. Why not? An inconspicuous pile of the roof because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite. That's why they're too orderly. There it is. You see a shabby little door. Secret unlocked! What is this, Dan? A tool shed? Let's investigate. Let's investigate. What the fuck is this? Bone yellow powder? Be still, my beating heart. It's amphetamine. Sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the mirror. He's studying you. These lines are all incredible. These are all fantastic. I wasn't thinking about taking it. I was thinking about justice. Of course, detective. Swift justice. Don't worry. We don't have to investigate every trace of narcotics. Yeah. Swift lightning justice. Faster. Harder. Justicer. See that ladder there? It's probably another way into the industrial harbor, no? A secret path the local kids use. Thank you, Kim. Get out of the way. We'll get fucked up. Cured pig's head. Mummified. Magnosolam magnesium. This game makes me sad. Sometimes I have a family member whose electrochemistry score is way too high. 
That is sad. Me too. And their volition score is real low. Doorway's gonna collapse soon. Restoration pillars keep the ruins together. A postcard. Grand Couron. The postcard depicts an ill-advised residential area overlooking the Jamrock Quarter. Thirteen-story buildings line the hillside like sarcophagi. Ominous fog already rising from behind. These are the last boom years. In 39, the project fails catastrophically, leaving behind an opiate and hepatitis B infested slum. Ooh, I did not realize I could interact with this. An intricate web of blue lines stretches across the torso of the hanged man. From the right shoulder to the solar plexus. Each time the lines intersect, a small oh, we white already read pattern this. still kind of has an ethnic feel to it, but nothing familiar. What's the meaning of this tattoo? For you to discover, you've gotten as far as you will without assistance. Someone closer to the victim might know. Someone who knows about history could tell you. Thanks, guys. Who are you? Gone. Huh. Take a look at this bullet. The bullet is safely sealed away in a plastic bag bearing the RCM stamp. Kim has filled out the label on the bag with the item number, case number, and date and location the bullet was found. Beside his orderly handwriting, the bullet looks especially sad, like a tiny, shriveled head of cauliflower. What do I do with you, bullet? What? I said, what do I do with you, bullet? Well, if I was the bullet, which I'm not, I would say, find the weapon that shot me. That's a great idea, Cam. If we find who owns it, we will have likely found who used it, possibly to kill our victim. In conclusion, the more we know about this bullet of yours, the better. Let's full feel the bullet through the bag. The squashed bullet has some sharp edges where the jacket has split open. It feels cold, even through the bag. You wouldn't ordinarily have cause to handle jacketed bullets. The citizen's militia uses cast bullets only. Little pebbles of metal loaded from the muzzle, usually in a cartridge. Inspect the bullet closer. The jacket of the bullet is made of a yellowish metal. It has blossomed out to reveal a dark gray core. The base of the bullet is close to five millimeters in diameter. Let's look at the jacket. You can just about make out a few strations near the base of the bullet. Little hairlines, linear. It feels standard. And the core? It's quite destroyed. Some of the fragments are still lodged in the wound. What can you say about the bullet so far? Jacketed close to five millimeter in diameter. A jacketed bullet. Okay. It would have been shot from a military-grade breech-loading rifle, not from a muzzle loader like those typically found on the streets of Martinez. Highly unusual. The people of Revachol haven't carried breech-loading weapons like this for nearly half a century. Even the RCM uses ordinary and jacketed conical bullets. This is strange. Very strange. I like this, officer. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. We need to find a gun that shot it. I love that. Strange means unique. Unique means incriminating. I love that. That's great. Something tells you that won't be any time soon. This will have to be one of those epic tasks that's open for a while. Wow. A rifle. Revolutionary period. Your bullet looks to be an old 4.46 millimeter from the surplus left over from the turn of the century. Probably an antique or a retrofitted antique. Make? The 4.46 caliber was widely used with the Belmagrave rifle, a Revacholian manufacturer. The BM dominated the battlefields of the Insulindian theater of the anti-centennial revolution 50 years ago. Incidentally, you have just such a rifle with you. The dusty old thing you found hidden in the basement below the commercial area. It's unusable, sadly. If it were, the bullet would probably fit the chamber. Anybody still making these? No, but Zeliger, a major firearm manufacturer, ended up with a surplus after the war. So there are still a lot of these old military rifles floating around, usually broken. The quality was appalling. Who uses this shit nowadays? Antiques enthusiasts, 
guerrilla fighters in distant countries, a few lucky jamrock bangers, you're looking for the same thing you found in that hidden weapons cache. Only in working order. Hmm. What are you thinking? Bullet? I think I know where this came from, Kim. Okay. And? Probably came from Val McGrath rifle. An antique. That makes sense. There can't be many breech loading rifles floating around in Martinez or anywhere in Ravasha, really. Why not? Sure, there's some arms trafficking, but the laws prohibiting the use of breech loaders we inherited from the monarchy have been effective, from what I've seen. Some new RCM recruits get impatient with their muzzle loaders once they've trained with military grade weapons, but they realize it's worth it in the end. Prohibiting? peacetime law enforcement to front-loaded rifles is a policy enforced by the Moralist International in all the nations of the Real Belt. Makes you consider every shot. I like it. Imagine if everyone, cops, citizens, had access to firearms that could shoot multiple rounds without pausing to reload. After the first shot, the second, third, and so on come much easier. Yeah, imagine. But, back to the investigation. It is a fascinating idea. The state of firearms discussion would be dramatically different if to fire a second shot took like, I don't know, like a full minute. <laughs> right? Like... A lot of shit would be very different. Seems like we're looking for antiques. To... Antiques enthusiast. Doesn't seem that likely. But we'll check out all possible leads. Next step, finding the gun itself. Okay. A an antique. That makes sure there's some, some new art. Prohibiting peacetime law enforcement to front load it. Imagine if everyone, but back to the investigation. Could the victim have been mixed up with some gorilla shit? Let's find out. Next step, finding the gun itself. Bullet has no more to say. Thank you, Bullet. Extremely happy with my progress on the case today. Yesterday was an absolute shit nightmare. Today? Pretty happy. Pretty happy about it. Just give me the fucking. Oh, you have to go up there to get it. Yesterday, that's right, day one. Oh, I'm up here. What if I had, I don't know, a plastic bag in my hand? Oh, still can't, huh? Awkward. But let's get a pry bar in there so that we can threaten people. Looks like someone left his tarpaulin cloak hanging on the railing here. When the wind ruffles the cloak, you can most definitely see a white rectangle on its back. That's a cop cloak! Yes, it's probably yours. It bears the RCM insignia, and you have a habit of being careless with your equipment. You could probably make the jump. You look like you've done some track and field in your day. Are you fucking with me? Let's look around. The wind is aggressive up here. <laughs> the lieutenant looks at the enormous crane towering in the distance over the container yard. The look in his eyes is a mix of the engineer-like interest and the wonder of a six-year-old seeing a horse for the first time. That machine is a Kvalsund 1020 HK. I'm gonna point at it. Is it? Kvalsund makes a lot of heavy equipment, but this is phenomenal, even for them. But I digress. We were focusing on your cloak here. Not right now. I wanna, I wanna grab this shit, thank you. Yoink. Alright. Back to the cloak. A tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings. What are we doing up here, man? I was under the impression we are on our way to meet the king of this castle under siege, Evrard. One of the people we are interviewing. 
This way, we may be able to get around his henchmen. Or it could be that we are just exploring. He's thinking you've forgotten where you are again. Do you really think it's mine? Do you think I can make that jump? The cloak? I do think it's yours, yes. As to whether you should go for it? Well, it doesn't seem too dangerous. Two major stops? Whenever you're ready to do it, I'll be right behind you. The cloak looks like a bag of goodies floating in the wind. Who knows what its pockets may have? Not right now. Oh, what's that? I'm gonna have to take off my pants and shoes for this. It's important that I take my pants and shoes off. The tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railing. too high. What were you thinking? You're not a gymnast. You're a boxer. And you've climbed way too high up here. I'll just make the jump next time. Sure. Just be careful, okay? Looks like you almost strained a muscle there. I'm gonna load it and just not do the check. Wait, no. Not right now. Should put my pants and shoes back on. Wait. Hold on. What happens if you boost it right now? Like, boost it up to number three. Also, I can't collect these bottles. Oh, I can't. Quick! The tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings. Yeah, it's still, is locked. still caught on the railing. Oh, it was motorotics. Oh, whoops. Well, I screwed up the timing on that, so we're gonna have to just do it again. Gotta put the bag in my hand to get that stuff. Savoir Fair check. Possible so I, I, uh, what I need is a, a hit to my motorotics. Motorix. Which means I have to wait a hundred seconds. Oops. What's up with you guys? Thinking about, uh, thinking about meth? Does boosting a core stat unlock white checks? It's complicated. I do not want meth, I want a hug. Oh, that's sweet. Ah, that's 60 seconds left. You ever beaten the game? No, uh, we're, uh... We're almost completely finished with what I've actually played of the game. Uh, I spoke with Everett and sat down in the chair and I did the interview with the lady and that is it for my original playthrough. And I definitely didn't get aces low either. I 
I never did get a reality loadout. I love Kim. I, w I hope I can make out with Kim near the end of the game. And start busting nuts all over. Kiss him on the lips. No. All right, gang. If you could motorotix me, that'd be super good. Tarpaulin cloak with possible RCM markings is still caught on the railings. Still gonna be a really shitty check. Well, that's a terrible check. Yeah, that's what I thought. Oh, fair enough. That's the consequences of my actions. Nope. Sure. Just be careful, okay? Let's put my pants back on. And my shoes. And we... are going to leave it there. I went a little longer than I usually do. One, because I'm very interested in this. And also because I had all that... those false starts. Uh... Yeah, it might have been the HDMI cable. As silly as that was. Yeah, it's midnight. When did that happen? That's Disco Elysium, baby. Baby. They said that a patch was going to come out today. Uh, it, there ain't no patch, man. There ain't no patch, baby. Singy. I love you, buddy. Having a dog and a cat's just the best. Having a wife's pretty good, too. Even if she is a bit of a... a bumble queen. Mm. Hey, I have an idea. To finish the stream out. First of all, let's thank it to Peepo. Oh, Facto gifted a sub. Thanks, Facto. And TK Slice, sub for five. Late night pajama pat is best pat. I'll be really honest. I only dress in clothes for errands. Like, I only, I, I only, if I have to go out somewhere for real, I'll put some real clothes on. Otherwise, nah. Lil De Shots sub, uh, gifted a sub. Thanks, Lil De Shots. And Bubble Wrap Gyro sub. Thanks, Bubble Wrap Gyro. Manos sub for 13. 13 months, got my second COVID today. Eh, sorry, dose, vaccine. Reacted pretty hard to the first dose, so I'm dreading this one. Took the day off tomorrow just in case. Still baffled Paige burning herself. That woman. Yeah, well, she's a special lady. She's my special lady. Alright. Let's take a look. At the Fortnite store. Wow. What the fuck is this lame shit? This looks fucking stupid and terrible. This looks awful. Oh, I thought that was gonna be like a John Cena. But it's not a John Cena. Well, that's okay. That's terrible until you put the mask on and then it's cool. Ooh. Terrible. Wow, it's really easy not to... Can't wait. It's really easy not to spend money on this when, like, the shop comes out and it's complete fucking garbage.
Isn't that nice? Where you're like, oh no, I hope I don't spend money on this. And then the game's like, don't worry, it's trash. It's one of the things that actually blew me away was that Apex Legends, I don't know if you guys remember, but they had a um, battle pass at some point, the very first battle pass they put out, and like I burst out laughing at how fucking absurdly hideous everything in the battle pass was. It looked, every single character looked like they got covered in mud, and it was only like three of the characters. And I'm like, why would anyone fucking buy this piece of shit? Motherfucker. Hey, you want to see a cool background? Yeah, hey. Hold on. Wait, what the? That's wrong. Check out that wallpaper I got going on. Ain't that cool? Wallpaper engine fucking it's fucking dope. Man. Wallpaper engine rules. That's what I have to say about wallpaper engine. Oh, Zangief's having a dream. Oh, yeah. I love you, buddy. Grimlock Fly, you survived a bit to say, fuck the middle class. They smell. Yeah. Yeah. Grimlock Fly kicked in 500 bits. Says, oh, wait, I, I mean Smash players. That's true. Wayne the Nerd suffered five. Thanks, Wayne. Skarnahu suffered 26. Catch you in the VODs, fellow hobo communists. Remember to stay crunchy, even in milk, and you'll go far. I like that. That's good. Stay crunchy, even in milk. That's like a penis thing. Yeah? Like my penis? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. King Regals suffered 29. Thank you, King. Effie, a.k.a. Pulpy, give to the sub, and Artemis Scowl sub for 14. Thank you. Bakasugoy kicked in six months. Got Disco and started playing Fortnite as of late. Thank you, Pat. You're welcome. Tube Man sub for 25. Go, Kami, Hobo, Cop, go. I chose Rapture sub for a year. So, wow, 28 months. Thank you. Hermitson sub for 26. Most Scam sub for two. Says, hello today. Glad to see favorite streamer. Me, me too. Get Mendoza, suffer 26, and Galactic Phanto, suffer 25. Standard Enemy, suffer 5, says, yeah, more disco. That's right, we're discoing. CN Alpha, suffer 27. Dr. Bird, suffer 3. Needle, suffer 20. And Physics LB, suffer 14. Say, good grief, Zangief, so adorable. He's such a cool baby. Crimson Harvest, suffer 31. Wib Wobbler, suffer 6, say, very nice. Thank you. Crimson God, suffer 10, say, wow, 10 months. Thank you. Lion Kun kicked in 15 bucks. Thank you, Lion Kun. Hey! Pat, I'm so sorry for being a fucking idiot and posting spoilers. I jumped the gun. Please take this money as an apology. I take my week time out with no complaints. I deserve worse. No, you deserve exactly that. I should have known better. Sorry to the chat as well. Please forgive me. You all is forgiven. I appreciate it. You did not have to send me $15. I want to make that really clear. I would have totally lived with actually literally nothing. Uh, but the apology is still very kind. I appreciate it. Um, I am salt sub for nine. Thank you. And music soup sub. Thank you. All right, that's it for me tonight. Where are we dropping, boys? Where are we dropping? Okay. Well, perfect timing. We, what Beyblade? What the fuck? Oh, we got my pal Justinian Knight. He's streaming Monster Hunter Rise. And what good timing, because I'm actually going to be playing uh, some... I'm just going to be fucking around in Rise tomorrow with my good pal, Justinian Knight, tomorrow. I don't know if we'll be doing high rank, depends how far he is. But uh, you guys say hi, and I will say bye. Bye. Shut the fuck up.